Welcome to 3ds Max 2011. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at 3ds Max Composite, a fully featured high-performance HDR-capable compositor based on Autodesk's Toxic software technology. 3ds Max Composite is a node-based compositor. On the right side of the screen, we can see what these nodes look like. Each node is an operator that is being applied to a specific piece of footage. The footage nodes look like this and can come from many sources, including 3ds Max's render elements and advanced file types, such as multi-channel EXR. As the footage and the operators flow from left to right, they arrive at the output node, which can be seen in the player on the left. Along the bottom of the screen is the workspace. The workspace contains tabs that control various parts of the compositing process. The composite user interface is completely customizable for your specific needs. The entire user interface can be changed for task-specific parts of the process, like browsing media, previewing, animating, or building reactions. Of course, you can always return to your original workspace. 3ds Max Composite's workflow interface is called the Gate UI. The Gate UI is designed for speed and efficiency. By clicking the middle mouse button, you can invoke the Gate UI, and then you simply move the mouse through one of the four gates, either top, bottom, left, or right, to invoke the program's commands. Let's see how node-based compositing works in 3ds Max Composite. I've gone to an earlier version of this composite, and I have two pieces of footage that don't have any output nodes attached to them, and what we're going to do is we're going to combine them together. I invoke the Gate UI, go to my Tools command, and under Composition, I'm looking for a Blend in Comp. Blend in Comp is one of the most frequently used composition operators to combine either footage or images together. So I get the top image and drag it into the input node for the front channel. I grab the bottom set of images and drag it into the input node for the back channel. And now I choose the Blend in Comp operator and you can see that they are combined. I would then grab the output node from Blend in Comp and move it on down the flow so that eventually it hooks up with our output. So let's introduce a color correction into the flow. I'm going to go ahead and invoke the gate UI, get tools, choose color correction, and bring the color corrector into the scene. I'm going to hold down my alt key and I'm going to put it right in between the threads between the two different nodes. And you can see the color corrector has now been introduced into the flow. And if I change it, you can see it's changing the whole scene. Let's use some masking to color correct only the tower. What I can do is I can take the output node from our tower mask and put it into the masking node on our color corrector. And you can see it comes in here, but it's still color correcting the whole thing. What we have to do is we have to tell the color corrector to only use the mask. So we'll change the channel and go back to our color correction. And you can see now we're only color correcting the tower. Now that we've seen the basic workflow of node-based compositing by combining two images and using masks, we're going to go ahead and render our output. So I choose the output node. I come over to the output tab and just make sure that all of our settings are correct. I'll go to the render tab and we'll give this output a file name and we'll just call this tower. And then we're ready to go. I go file, render, and I can initiate the render to get the output sequence. So besides the blend in comp and the color correction operators that we've seen here, 3ds Max Composite incorporates keying, tracking, camera mapping, raster and vector paint, spline-based warping and motion blur and depth of field. All of these tools make a great feature set for refining and improving your rendered output. 